Welcome, friends! Your favorite degenerates, Krista and Jason, are at it again! Let's celebrate the day! What's up, degenerates? What's the situation, degenerate nation? How you doing today, baby? I'm doing all right, I suppose. Yes. So, I see we have booze here. We and do. And I was on the road last week. Uh, well, I've been on the road for a couple weeks, so Krista is going to take the reins on our next drink. She did all the research and all that stuff, and so uh, she's going to jump in the driver's seat. But first, I want to uh -huh. mention that super cool shirt you've got on there. Thank you. I've got one, too. You do? Huh? Low life on the high seas. Yep. And if uh, someone wanted one of these shirts, they're available in our Teespring shop. I'll throw the uh, link down there. End of commercial. <laughs> <laughs> Now on to our regularly, regularly scheduled broadcast. Okay, so this drink, um, I, I wanted to make a drink that was easy to make, but something that we've tried on the Carnival Cruise, or a version of on the Carnival Cruise, and I wanted something with some history. So I went back to a drink that can date back as far as 1740. 1740? Right. Wow. Okay. That's so, the oldest drink we've done. It is the oldest drink we've done. Um, it was very popular on, believe it or not, ships and throughout um, cruise Navy. Cruise ships? Not so much cruise ships. In 1740, I don't know if there was any not, cruise not ships. Not so much. Right. Not so much. Okay. Leisure sea sailing was probably not a thing. But this was a common, um, or a version thereof, was a common mixture back in the 1700s, 1800s with all Navy personnel. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Why? Because are you going to get to that? I get, just, I'll get I, to am that. Am I jumping? Sorry. You, you are. You, yeah. Okay, but the version that we know as the classic um, was created back in 1889. Classic what? I'm getting there. Oh, sorry. Uh, it was created back in 1889 by a guy named Jennings Cox. Cox. And it's called the daiquiri. The daiquiri. That's what we're doing here. So we're doing the daiquiri. Okay. Would you like to know why it's called the daiquiri? Yes. Okay. It's because Jennings Cox was actually in a community called Daiquiri, Cuba. A town named Daiquiri. A town named Daiquiri. Ah. And so he was having this dinner party, by the way. Jennings Cox was a American mining engineer. He went down to Cuba. He was going to run these iron mines and make a fortune and make it big. Um, I don't know if that happened or not. It, the story pretty much died at the end of the creation of the daiquiri. But um, he was having this wonderful party, dinner party. They ran out of whiskey. I don't they know were, how wonderful that party was then. They ran out of vodka. <laughs> but he had rum. Proper prior planning. Right? But. But he had rum. This is exactly how the martini was invented too, right? Uh -huh. And the martini goes back to Martinez, California. So there's some yeah. parallels here of how drinks get named seem to be on locale. Right? right? So he had rum. However, rum, white rum by itself, not so yummy. At least, at least you're not. I, I don't disagree with that. So what he did was he threw some fresh squeezed lemon juice in there. He threw a teaspoon of sugar in there. He mixed it all up and he went, eh, not bad. Oh, and water, a little bit of water, little just to water. kind of make, dilute yeah, it, make it a little more lemonade. Stay hydrated. Um, <laughs> and it wasn't that bad. So today we're gonna make the Cox Special, which is known throughout Cuba. Mm -hmm. um, it was available in most bars in the area as the Cox Special. <laughs> He's trying so hard to be good. This is killing him. Um, everybody loves a cock special. Everybody loves a cock special. Okay. And so, God, please move on before I, the fifteen-year-old in my head is screaming right okay. now. <laughs> okay. So, um, how the cock special got to stop it? Got to the United States was there was an admiral, and you want to know what his name was? Okay. Johnson. Okay, the 15-year-old in my head is really <laughs> carrying on now. So a guy named Johnson yeah. brings a thing called the Cox Special yeah. to the United States. Uh-huh. I could not write this better. <laughs> okay, so Admiral <laughs> Lucas Johnson was down in Cuba. He was living it up with the sailors at the naval base and having a great time. Oh, 15-year-old in my head. <laughs> Stop. So, Seaman Johnson <laughs> with his cock special. Yes. Okay. 
so, so we're all he's clear. down there and he's he's hanging out. Everybody's having a great time. He orders the cock special and he's like, "Wow, this is awesome!" So he ra races back to Washington D.C. and then in the 1930s and 40s, um, it's it's all over every Navy base, U.S. Navy base, it, it ha everywhere. Um, Navy guys know how to party. Navy guys know how to party. So um, the reason it was prominent on the Navy bases in the 30s, 40s, and today still, and the reason it was prominent back in 1740 is because the citrus based was giving vitamin C to the sailors, which helped prevent scurvy. And you don't want scurvy. Nope. And the alcohol was obviously in um, kill it all. <laughs> it does increase morale aboard. So, like I said, um, there is a little dispute, as with all drinks. Yeah, that's a um, dispute. You know, some sources say that um, another guy named Pagliucci, I'm, yeah. I suck at names, um, was the creator of the drink, or that it was already a Cuban specialty. So a lot of people try to take Jennings Cox out of the mix. Um, but there's no sexual innu innuendos with that I'm story, sorry. so we got, we're sticking with the cock special brought by Johnson and some other semen. Okay, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and we're going to mix this drink. Okay. Um, I'm going to mix two at a time, because um, there's two of us and, and you guys don't want to watch me pour a bunch of stuff. Um, well, you mix. I'll go over the alcohol on this one. As, we, as always, we like to uh, discuss the price the uh, amount of liquor in it, what the ABV ends up to be, and then compare it to beer, which is usually our benchmark. So Two ounces the, of white rum. The first one we're going to do is the Cox Special here. Yeah. And it has one ounce of rum in it and about six ounces of non-mixer ice melted down, the lemon juice, the simple syrup, the water, all of that business, which comes in at about a 5.7% ABV drink. So it's it's pretty approachable, pretty drinkable. I could see why you would issue this to your sailors on a ship and they wouldn't be jumping off the side and, you know, They'd be happy. doing belly flops happy, and, you happy, know, happy. big party. They could still ride the, uh, ride the fun. And at 9.50 a drink, we do this ABV, cost per ABV. We take the price of the drink, we divide the, uh, the ABV on it, and you get to this cost per ABV. So if you're looking to see if you're getting your bang for your buck as far as liquor's concerned in your drink, this one comes out to $1.66 per ABV. Um, we use beer as our benchmark, like I said, we always do. <clears throat> 16 ounce on board will run you uh, $5.95 and it's 4.2% alcohol, which comes out to about 4.2 or a, uh, a uh, 0.7 uh, pure alcohol in that drink and it comes out to $1.42 per ABV. So as a uh, comparison, this drink would probably be a bit more expensive, but pretty approachable as far as a mixed drink goes. Yes. Yeah. Now one thing, um, oh, you're doing the shake it, shake it, shake it. One thing about this drink, um, it does call for regular sugar, a teaspoon per ounce of rum. Um, I chose to do simple syrup because it's already mixed and it's 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 easier. I don't, I suck at this part. It's simple. Um, so Hence the name. The um, translation for simple syrup versus uh, regular sugar is anywhere from a quarter to a um, quarter to a half an ounce per teaspoon of sugar in the recipe. So, it's really hot out today, so I'm making sure there's plenty of ice. Yeah, Florida life, huh? So. Spring has sprung. There you go. Cheers. Cheers. Ooh, lemony. That's good. That's like boozed up lemonade. Yeah. 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 Ooh, I wonder if the, how this would be as like an Arnold Palmer if you were, you know. You could. Start doing you could, your thing you with the recipe. I, I, there's, there's plenty of versions. I thought, um, you know, there's not a whole lot of car because we're on the keto, or at least we've been low carb in it for a while. Mm, I think so, that next bottle over might, or yeah, the simple syrup might yeah. be a, a spoiler there. Yeah, the simple syrup's probably a spoiler. I think the lemon juice is probably pretty low in carb. Um, obviously, water is, um, and the white rum is low in carb. So one I've ounce at some, of simple syrup has 19 grams of carbs in it. Yeah. So 
Um, this is not really carb friendly, but I do have some options for that if somebody's interested. It's really, really refreshing. Yeah, uh, hot it actually weather feels drink. very good because it's yeah. hot as heck out here today. Man, all these drinks, they, they these Caribbean drinks are all, that's, that's decent. Now, stuff. now careful, because this is a sneaker. Rum is always a sneaker. This is a sneaker. So we're gonna drink this, we're gonna do our thing, we're gonna come back because we haven't had anything to drink today other than water and coffee and... Monster. Monster. You had a monster? Yeah. I jelly. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna drink this, we're gonna come back, we're gonna blow, we're gonna mix another with more fun facts. We're back! Welcome back. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> um, so we finished our drink. Um, we're gonna do that whole blow thing that he loves because he's just a numbers guy. Science. Uh, science. Well, I think it's a, you know. For, you blinded me with I, science. <laughs> I've learned a lot by using this little deal. I know it's, you know, it may not be accurate to like, you know, law standards or whatever, but it's amazing that, you know, the amount of alcohol that we drink and what that correlates into, toward the result end of it at least. It's, it's cool. And, you know, it's one thing to sit here and describe how you feel. It's another thing to measure it. And then the difference between her and I. I made it. <laughs> oh. 0.05. So. There's the difference weight-wise. Maybe we don't want to drink this and, um, all day. Maybe I would dilute it a little more. Yeah, I, I thought it was a little a tart. I, mean, I, I thought it was just a little tart for me, but it's really, really clean. A good hot weather drink. Yeah. So um, I, I might add more water to it to try to... Um, disperse some of that rum so I could actually drink it all day? You could. You could try. And... I'd say blow, 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 or suck, suck, suck. <laughs> That's pretty good. Does that... Point oh. 0.03. So you are two tenths above me, or two thousandths, hundredths. Yeah, yeah, hundreds. So, oops. The weight, the weight definitely makes a difference because the way blood alcohol is measured is per uh, 100 mil. So you would just have less blood because you're smaller. So it, I have less blood. Yeah. Okay, so some fun facts. Tell me some fun facts. So that version we just drank. The old school. The uh, the, the Cox special. The Cox special. So instead of using lemon juice, had we used lime juice? You know what it was called? No. A uh, rum sour. A rum sour. Okay. Um, okay. That that's not half as cool as the word daiquiri, which right. Uh, daiquiri. When when she said well, we're going to make a daiquiri for this week, and I'm thinking it's too cold to fire up the blender. Well, you know, or at least I thought it was thinking frozen drinks. Mm -hmm. And it turns out it wasn't a frozen drink. At some point, throws no. it through it in a blender. But in the fifties, they someone decided <laughs> because the recipe does call for crushed ice. Someone says I don't have crushed ice. They threw it in a blender. Next thing you know, you got frozen daiquiris. So I'm Stop. thinking strawberry daiquiris, banana daiquiris, you know, cruise drinks. And yeah. Turns out this is a cruise drink. It's on yes, Carnival, it or this one you're about to talk about is on Carnival's website. This one I'm about to talk about is on Carnival's <coughs> website. So, the next drink, which is a version of the daiquiri, is called a Papa Doble in Cuba, or Cuba. Um, the, tip, how, the kip of tuba. The kip of tuba. Um, <laughs> it's called the Papa Doble Cuba. It's normally served on Cuban cruises and normally in the Havana Bar. Um, and the Havana Bar on Carnival Cruises serves many different styles and, and variations of daiquiris. Uh, this is one of them, um, and it is called the Papa Doble. Why how, do they call it the Papa Doble? Um, because um, Ernest Hemingway, this is one of his favorite drinks. Um, you, you know who Ernest Hemingway is? I think everybody knows right? that rock star name. Okay, so Ernest Hemingway absolutely loved this drink. He loved the Cox Special, but he was a little concerned about the sugar that was in it because his dad was a diabetic, so he wanted to make a version of it um, that didn't have added sugar. Wow. Um, so instead of adding the sugar, he swapped out the sugar for the maraschino liqueur and instead of lemon juice, he added grapefruit juice. So it's a couple, it's a little bit of variations, but Hemingway, I don't know if anybody knows this, Hemingway was quite the connoisseur of liqueur. Hmm. Creative um, types. Yeah, he, 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 he was definitely a degenerate. 
-hmm. He can be, um, his, his history um, can go back at um, a whiskey and soda. Uh, the martini, he's got roots with the martini. He's got roots with the daiquiri. He's got roots with the gin and tonic. Um, dripped absinthe, or absinthe, dripped absinthe, um, and a whole base of the, a whole bunch of the, the suite of Campari based drinks, the Negroni, um, the Americano, and a variation of his was a, called the Gin Campari and Soda. So Hemingway was quite the, the connoisseur of alcohol. Um, you can actually find a book on Amazon called uh, To Have and To Have Another, or To Have and Have Another, a Hemingway <laughs> Cocktail Companion. I was going to buy the book. It's 43 bucks. Ooh. So if he wasn't a, a poet, right? he would have probably been a bartender. Yeah. Um, the Kindle version is $14, so I'm still possibly considering it. Um, but yeah, Hemingway, Hemingway liked his alcohol. Um, and um, he created this drink at a Havana bar called the Floridita. The Floridita has five different versions of the daiquiri on it. One of, actually, one of them is actually called the Hemingway Especial. Um, and they spelled Hemingway wrong back in 1937 because they, didn't, they wanted to pay homage to their most famous client. But they didn't want to flat out call it Ernest Hemingway's drink. <laughs> so, um, let's get to mixing this thing. What's in this thing? Oh, yeah. Uh, I, what's I put in, in the this amount thing? of alcohol in it, but what's the recipe? If you go to Carnival's okay. website, you can obviously look it up. It's yes. in, on their recipes. Um, it calls for two ounces of rum. And on the Carnival ships, they either use Florida Cana or a version of white rum, which is usually Bacardi. Um, we're going to use Florida Cana today. Yep. I picked up this bottle uh, in uh, Costa Rica. Yeah. So it's, we're close to the source. So it calls for two ounces of rum. It calls for an ounce and a quarter of maraschino liqueur. It calls for a half ounce of lime juice and a bunch of ice. You shake it, shake it, shake it. You put a cherry in the cup with the ice to kind of add a little bit more of a cherry tropical thing. We could have our umbrellas, but we don't need them. Let's do the booze on this one. Okay, this you thing, do the booze while I mix. This thing is an animal because, uh, like the uh, the cucumber sunrise, only has two ounces of vodka, forty proof, same as uh, same proof as Bacardi. But this thing throws an ounce and a quarter no. of the yeah, maraschino ounce liqueur. And I'm actually gonna mix two at a time. So if you're watching me pour, that's why. Yeah. So, or an, uh, it has 0.75 of an ounce per drink of, mascher of maraschino liqueur, but it ends up coming out at somewhere around 14% alcohol. So if you do that ABV cost analysis per ABV, this thing is about 71 cents per ABV. It's a pretty good value as far as a strong drink for the 950 price tag it brings. So yeah, and it has one ounce of pure alcohol in it. This is the biggest drink we have ever drunk on our Kick the Cruise Blues and make a drink at home series. I ain't drunk yet. Man, we might need to get on some of them guys' burgers after this. <laughs> we got the leftovers from last week. Oh, Lord. We have all yeah, the we ingredients. Still got donkey sauce. We got all the anyway. ingredients. We, could, we should do that. So, it's an animal. Um, pace yourself if you're going to have Papa Doble's at home. Ounce and a quarter. Ounce and a quarter of grapefruit juice. That's a lot. favorite part. Okay. Except for the getting it off part. Yeah. You know, it's really cool. When I shake this, look at the, how frosted this glass gets. And the more you shake, that Carnival's website actually says, when you think you shook it enough, shake again. So there must be something to it. Yeah. Do you think it's for more dilution because it's such a powerful drink, or you think it just needs to be super cold? I, I think it pissed on me. Um, I think um, it needs to be super cold. I may have gotten it not as secure on that lid. And this is an ice drink. This is an ice drink. 
and I messed up my pretty new shirt, honey. That's alright, we have a washer. We're, I we're pretty high end over here. Yeah. <laughs> we have automatic washers. Cheers to Ernest Hemingway. Yeah. A lot of his um, poems, literary arts actually contain references to alcohol and references to specific drinks. Degenerate. Love that. You cannot tell if that is so powerful. This is dangerous. This is dirty. If somebody just handed you one of these and you started drinking it and they didn't warn you that it was a 14% drink, you'd be in deep trouble. Because yeah. you, could, you could probably pound this in about 10, 20 minutes. Yeah. And then you'd move on to the next one and the next thing you know. I'm gonna... I like sweet stuff. And... And me in her life. Hello. And... <laughs> We didn't add this, so I'm adding it now. We're supposed to, add, supposed to put cherry. Yeah? Yeah. 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 Thanks. You're welcome. Cruise to Cuba. Get yourself a Papa Doble. It's on my bucket list. <clears throat> and in Spanish, Papa Doble just means double potato. Okay, now I added some simple syrup because it was a little bitter for me. Um, so I added some simple syrup to it, which took away from the original drink, but I think it made it a lot better for me. Well, this, you know, this is 2019. I think cocktails of the past were almost medicinal-ish, you know? Yeah, it does taste a little medicinal. If you think medicinal. about the classic old school cocktails, and then it wasn't until, you know, we started out with the tiki thing maybe? Yeah. Or somewhere around that era where we would find a sweet drink. Well, it wasn't the 50s when the... Um, the Hama Mama, 40s and 50s. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah. It's just a theory. And this was created probably ten, uh, well, quite a few years before that, so more medicinally. Well, just a, it's a it's a it's a alcohol drink. We didn't. I don't know yeah. that it was associated with being of something that was super super smooth. But this is pretty doggone good and pretty sneaky. This is strong. Yeah. Well, it's great. I'm time. already feeling it. Maybe it's the first one. Ah. <laughs> oh. Okay, so we're gonna drink drink number two, and we'll be back. Cheers. Holy crap. <laughs> this drink is strong. This drink is an animal. Um, I, I know we're eating low carb, but the kid had pizza in the fridge, and the, I'm, uh, wow. Snacks weren't gonna cut it. I had to move to the heavier shit. <laughs> so, uh, my opinion on the Papa Doble is a, it's a it's potent. So as an opener, it would be good. Something you, but I, I don't. It wouldn't be an all day drink. And if nope. you don't like tart drinks, if you're more of a sweet drink person, don't bother. Save yourself the trouble because it's very very tart. Mm -hmm. It's a, a a little medicinal kind of a an old fashioned boozy drink, right? Mm -hmm. It'll put your grab you by the boo boo. <laughs> grab you by the boo boo and say <laughs> hey. Okay, um, however, Ernest Hemingway did come out, come out. <laughs> Got a little peepa. <laughs> that last one knocked me for a loop. Um, Ernest Hemingway did come out with some pop, very, uh, uh, a wonderful quote that I think we all need to live by. Always do sober what you said you do drunk. <laughs> that will teach you to keep your mouth shut. And uh, maybe you've made a promise or two when you and you were hanging out and you're mm. declaring your, your uh, best friendness to the person you're drinking with. Yes. So. <laughs> That's good um, words to live by. Ernest Hemingway, man. What a degenerate. <laughs> <laughs> right. And I just have to say, because um, I was giving him a bad time. I'm like, you always do the talking. You always sound like the smart guy. Um, I want to be smart. So I thought I'd do smart. the research on this dr drink. Thank you, baby. And... Um, I don't know how he kept it after the second drink, so... There's a lot of editing involved. The, the, like, uh, you know, the intro and to drink one and the breathalyzer, it goes really smooth. And then uh, after drink two, it requires a lot of editing. Because, <laughs> woo! So, uh, this this drink, it, it, it is. It, it, it's good if you don't like, um, if you're a fan of like the pomegranate martini, the uh, 40 is the new 20, then I would say you'd probably be a fan of the Papa Doble. If you're not into uh, tart drinks, then it's probably not going to be for you. 
and I'm not sure that I'm a fan. I mean, we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and try to keep mixing drinks with this cherry maraschino liqueur, but it's it got a real medicinal taste, and I'm just not sure I'm a fan of yet. How are you, love? Point nine. Point nine. Yes. Wow. Yeah. I may be intoxicated. Papa Doble is a monster. Yes. Um. So, for all of you that um also watch these amazing couple. This, this couple that decided to bounce on us for Kenny Chesney, this couple that deserved to go to Kenny Chesney, this couple who has put us in charge of the drink of the week next Saturday. Oh, we're the same evening. I'm .092, that's saying something. That thing's an animal. Yeah, so um, they put Adventures Ahead. I love them. If you found us and not them, go to Adventures Ahead oh, and subscribe. Josh and Michelle are so um, fun. Wow, they're incredible. We, I mean, we 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 confess our love for Josh and Michelle every yes. week virtually, but now we're we're in charge of the uh, drink the of drink the of the week. week. So uh. so here, Chris has come up with a recipe that won't break the bank and make you go out and spend fifty bucks. Now the second drink was it's way too powerful to do a drink of the week. And if it's you want to make it and you like tartness and you you have some of this stuff in your cabinet, by all means. Go to Carnival's website, download the recipe, you know, or screenshot the recipe, make it. Go for it. But it is not an all-night drink. You are not, not gonna make us. it past drink two. Um, uh, I would love to see you try. Go ahead and have three of them. I'll see you in the chat on Saturday night at 9 p.m. Right. <laughs> um, if, like I said, if you found us and not Adventures Ahead, go subscribe to Adventures Ahead. Um, they're they're wonderful. So what's um, the recipe? The recipe, based on what we drank, which was the first version and the yeah, classic. The daiquiri, the, the um, Cox Special. The Cox Special. Now, we like to make drinks that are easy, because um, I, I I don't have time to, to sit, I mean, I did on camera, but I don't really have time on a regular basis to shit there. To shit there? Shit there. <laughs> I don't shit there either. <laughs> to sit here and like measure and for one drink. It's not gonna happen. So. Based on that, based on what we liked, based on our opinions, we think one ounce of, for one person, one drink. I'll throw the recipe up when she comes out. Later. One ounce of rum and two ounces of pre-mixed lemonade, whatever. So go find your country time lemonade yeah, that yeah. you like. Go, go buy find a your ounce bottle of uh, lemonade. Uh, lemonade, Wawa lemonade, AM, PM lemonade, whatever lemonade you like. Put two ounces of that and one ounce of rum, shake it up and call it good. And then basically you've just made a daiquiri on a budget. If you got right. uh, unlimited resources and uh, your life's turned out really well, then by all means invest in a bunch of expensive liquor and shit. Right. But, now if you want to go more original um, and still have a similar experience, one ounce of rum, one ounce of lemon juice, and one ounce of water. Half an ounce of water based on Cox Special Mix recipe just wasn't enough <laughs> you can't do it can you no. <laughs> you can't give a straight face when i say that so based on cox's special recipe <laughs> original special <laughs> recipe he um i think another half ounce per 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 glass per person um makes a big difference um it does dilute a little more it makes it a little less tart brings out the little more sweet so one ounce of rum, one ounce of lemon juice, and one ounce of water. Thank you for paying attention to the daiquiri. I was actually astonished at the history. Yeah, that's a pretty um, rock star drink to find the Ernest Hemingway woven into your drink. Right, and the fact that it's been around in in a in versions of either with lemon juice or lime juice since yeah. 1740. It's been a really cool ride to mm -hmm. to experience some of the history of this stuff and to see where it goes and to keep digging up these interesting characters through the history of the drinks. I've been missing out all this time. Um, if you go to a bar and order a Hemingway or a Papa Doble, be prepared sure, yeah, to sit for to a while. Bar. Don't drive to that bar. <laughs> Have a great week. We will see you guys next Saturday. Until then, celebrate, celebrate the, day. the day. Much love to our friends. Be the good in the world. Spread the love and go out on an adventure. Please like, comment, and subscribe.